If you are thinking that it's impossible to start a yoga and mindfulness practice and keep it in your busy life, but you want to because of all the benefits it brings, I'm here to tell you that you absolutely can fit it into your life and it will be help you become a more present and peaceful with your children. I'm Hunter Clark Fields and I help mamas go from overwhelmed to grounded using the tools of yoga and mindfulness. In the first video, I shared why yoga and mindfulness will help you become a more peaceful parent. So if you missed that, go ahead and jump back now and watch it. Feeling overwhelmed and too busy is the most common struggle that women talk to me about. You may want to feel more peaceful and grounded, but making the time to dedicate to that seems impossible. I know, I know how busy life is. I'm a working mother of two small girls. But you can do it, I promise. I've helped many other busy moms do it. Right now, I'm going to share five ways that you can fit a home practice into your busy life. Ready? Good. The first step is to make a commitment. Making your self-care a priority is huge. You have to value the health of your body and the peace of your mind. When we take care of ourselves, we can give our best to those we love. Commit to your practice time. Treat it as a non-negotiable part of your day. Write your commitment down. Place it where you can see it each morning. Ask a good friend to hold you accountable. Your self-care time is essential. Treat it as such. Next, start really, really small. This is really the secret sauce. Everyone wants to make a big change, but starting small is how to create a habit that lasts. Start with only five minutes a day, but do it regularly. Small shifts really grow over time. This kind of super small change can make a huge difference in every part of your life. It has to be something you can stick with though. The key here is to start small for habit building. So my third tip is to evaluate how you waste your time. Do you check your email first thing in the morning and after breakfast, drop off, etc.? Do you stay up late watching shows? How much time do you spend on Facebook? It can help to write down how you really spend your time so that you can see how to fit in the priority of self-care. When you are committed to your self-care practice and it is a really small chunk of time, we can often find many pockets of time in the day in which to practice. Take a day and write down how you spend your time. My fourth tip is to lighten your standards around the unimportant stuff. Let go of perfectly spotless and aim for dirt removal. Allow the kids to have an easy breakfast of granola instead of cooking them eggs. Make the bed, empty the dishwasher, etc. after you've done your daily practice. Around my daughter's birthday last year, I was really busy. Usually I make something homemade and wonderful to bring in for their school. But I was so busy, so I talked to my daughter about it. And you know what? For her, it was actually better to have store-bought chocolate-covered pretzels and cheese than homemade muffins because it was such a big treat. It was unusual. So relaxing my standards really helped both of us. Finally, my last tip is that it's very helpful to pick a sacred time of day. I like to wake up earlier than the rest of my family to practice first thing. This helps in that A, it's quiet, and B, I know that I'll get it done. First thing in the morning is good for me and many others, but you may find another time that is good for you. An evening wind down practice is also enormously grounding. Try to find a sacred time for your self care. So to recap, first, make a commitment. Step two, start really, really small. Step three, evaluate how you waste your time. Step four, lighten your standards. And step five, pick a sacred time of day. Now that last step might seem impossible for those of you with small children or unpredictable sleepers. Really quick, here are three tips to help you. One, keep the big picture in mind. Remember that this will pass, but the expectations you set now will also shape your mornings for years to come. 
There are some specific strategies around this that I'll be mentioning later, but keep the big picture in mind. My second tip, fit it in when you can. Don't worry about waking up early when you are not getting enough sleep. Five minutes of mindful yoga can make a huge difference in your day, even if it is in the middle of the day. Trust me, I often fit in short yoga breaks. My third tip is to try one of those wake-up sleep lights. This is a clocker with a light that changes color at the hour when it is okay for your child to get out of bed. Kids Sleep or the American Innovative Lights are great. We use this with our daughter to help her understand when it was okay to wake up. Totally worth the investment. So today you've learned five ways to fit a yoga practice into your busy life, and I've shared three tips for parents of small children and unpredictable sleepers. I hope this helps you make the steps that you need to take to create your own regular practice because it really will give you the foundation to become the parent you want to be. Right now, I want you to take action and answer this question in the comments below. Do you make any time now in your day for regular self-care? Tomorrow in the final video, I'll be sharing practical tips on how you can make that mind-body connection. And I'll be sharing the four pillars of becoming more present so that you can really be there for your family and for your life. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow with the first of the four pillars that are really essential to becoming that grounded, peaceful mama you want to be.